This is brakes class day. So where are we talking about some electronic brake stuff here? A lock, track, electronic brake control system. This is just a sort of a brief touch on the ones that uh, Mercedes came out with. Just so you kind of get a little bit of a feel for this. And you know what stability strategies are about, right? You know what? You know how does your what, what what in the world would you do if you're wanting to make the vehicle more stable and more manageable going around curves and stuff? How would you use your brakes to do that? You would apply brakes to the side that mm, not not turn yeah. You put it on the inside. Yeah, the ones that are the ones that are going to give you the most. Uh, most safety and all that. Right. If you can you stabilize it by breaking of the individual wheels, reducing the engine torque, and or by making steering corrections, uh, basically. So, you know, if you've got electronics uh, handling your steering, you can do all that. Or the right height of the vehicle. Yep. Uh, but yeah, right height's a good thing, too. Uh, the benefits of the driver include improved steerability in critical situations, so you don't basically don't lose it. Reduce danger of slipping or skidding like that. You go sliding around there. Uh, anybody been in? Anybody been in a skid recently? All right. So I mean, if you kind of know how to work the wheel, if you kind of know how to work the wheel and you think fast enough, you can do things. But a lot of people aren't really able to do that. I'm talking about the air ride stuff. All right. That is wonderful. What's going on back here? Greater vehicle stability with within physical limit and optimized stopping distances. Now, how is this system going to optimize your stopping distance? And I'm not talking about anti-lock brakes per se. How's it? How is it, How is an electronic brakes braking system going to help you stop? Probably quicker? it can react quicker than you can. Well, I mean, basically, it's not going to react until it knows you're hitting the brakes if you're stopping. You know what I mean? Well, I it'll do, it'll do other things when you're going around curves. I them. thought you was talking about them kind of like uh, you see on these new commercials of these um, BMWs or something. You run up behind somebody too fast and it'll stop for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is a, that is a, this is a different thing. What you're talking about is when it knows something's there and it stops. And that's, that's not exactly what I'm talking about here. Uh, drive by wire. Mechanical systems are being replaced with X by wire, and that means it determines the driver's commands via sensors, processes the information, and passes the commands on to actuators. Then you got your electronic throttle that's a drive by wire thing, right? You got that? All right, so basically, you got your stability, increased comfort, stability and increased comfort, and then enhanced stability so you can get into your steering system thing and all. Uh, the best concept is this electro, this is at the time that this information came out there, was the electrohydraulic brake, which is Sensotronic Brake Control, Bosch developed for Daimler Chrysler. And back there was a time when Daimler Chrysler and, uh, you know, Jeep were all, you know, they were all part of the Daimler family and they're not anymore. Uh, but basically what you got here, you got a diagram there. You got your brake operation unit. Pedal travel simulator. See, they want you to feel normal. Even when you got electronic throttle control, they have the throttle pedal with the same amount of springiness on it that you would have if you had a regular throttle cable, because they want you to feel, want it to feel normal to you. You know, the pressure under your foot, and all that kind of thing. You got a master cylinder, got a separation valve, you got a plunger. You see all that? All right. See, there's your front axle, there's your rear axle, and you can see all this stuff right here. These schematics right here will sort of make your uh, as cross if you're not used to looking at it. When the brake's activated or when it intervenes to stabilize it, the control unit calculates the desired target brake pressures on the individual wheel by using its software algorithm. And it determines necessary braking pressure for each of the four wheels separately, measures them individually, and it can regulate the brake pressure on the individual wheel via the wheel pressure modulator, which is really cool stuff right there. All right, so this is the difference in what you got going on here. Previous model with conventional braking technology. You see how you're going there? How you sort of losing it going around the curve? Well, this particular one here, thanks to SBC, start off with new braking. All right, see that? Basically follows the curve. I don't want to read all the words anyway. <coughs> so basically, 
you got it raises braking comfort because the rate pressure can be regulated is completely variable even without driver actuation and vehicle guidance functions such as adaptive cruise control can be integrated. You know about the ones that they, when you're driving along and you're coming up behind a car and it makes sure that you don't get too close to the car when you're on cruise, you know, that's another thing that they're putting on cars nowadays. Um, and so additional advantages, uh, the soft stop function, now listen, this is where it gets cool. The soft stop function provides a soft and smooth stop, referred to as chauffeur-like braking, now provided by the electro-hydraulic brake. When it, my dad was first teaching me how to drive, and uh, I would, when I got ready to stop, I would just stand on the brake until it stopped. And then what that causes is whoa, and it throws you back against the seat. My dad wanted me to drive like a chauffeur. You, we learned to do it automatically. You know what I mean? You, as it start, as, as the, uh, you're coming to a stop, you let off the brake so that it doesn't do that, you know. Everybody learned that just by default. Then you got a dry brake function. Now this is where the this is where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, or the pads meet the rotors. Uh, it carries out regular and short, weak brake impulses on wet roads in order to dislodge the water film on the brake discs and assure the full and immediate brake effect every time. Switching on the windshield wiper is how it knows you're on a wet road. You got me? Do you understand what I just said? Anybody paying attention? Anybody looking at the if screen the on your phone? the wipers don't work, it don't work. When you turn on the wipers, it knows you're on a wet road. Well, that doesn't make no sense because people turn on the wipers to wash the windows. Well, it knows that whether you washed your window or not, too. It's smarter than that. So well, if you turn on your wipers, you don't turn your wipers on. Huh? Well, the train, you don't turn your wipers on. Well, then it won't do it. But your car don't do that either. And it's okay, right? Not like it won't stop. It's just that when your wipers are on, and most normal people turn on their wipers unless they got rain X on their windshield, you're basically driving along here, and it's, con it's constantly bouncing the pads against the rotors a little bit to keep them dry. So you don't have wet rotors, you know what I mean? And having wet rotors is not the kiss of death because you can still hit the brake in the rain. Everybody has and you still stop, right? But it's going to stop better if the rotors are dry. So when you turn on the wipers, it's going to be bouncing those things against there. That's what this system is set up to do. And that's basically whenever you can tap software or algorithms. Do you know what happened whenever Neil Armstrong went to land on the moon? The computers went out. Or the computer, it only had one computer in the Eagle when he went to land in 1969, and I was watching it on TV. He went to land that thing. He was looking up into the sky. He had to actually take control of the controls and the computer, since the computer wouldn't work, and he had to land it by hand. He had to do a stick landing. We was a pilot, so it helped. And what they did was they said, we're going to make smaller computers so we can stack five of them in there, and if this one dies, we can just put another one online. And from that came the computers we have on our cars, because computers got littler and littler and littler, and we could put stuff in the car. Right. The traffic assistant brakes the vehicle with predefined deceleration when the driver removes their foot from the accelerator cell. The driver doesn't have to constantly change back and forth. If you let off the gas, this is how it works. Well, if you let off the gas and it knows that you're stopping, then it basically will kind of stop it for you. Now, the problem I got with this is if it dumbs you down so that you're not so that if you're not used to that crap, you might, you know, lose your edge driving a regular car. The drive-away assistant prevents rolling backwards on a hill and simplifies the drive-away process. They were doing this eons ago. There was a little thing that they had in the in some of the cars that had a little uh, ball sort of a deal and whenever you were on a hill it would hold the brakes until you went to take off you know about automatically. But anyway that function is activated when the car is stationary by quickly and firmly pressing down on the brake pedal. The brake effect is automatically canceled the next time pressure is applied to the accelerator pedal. So basically, it's making some decisions for you right here. And this is the cool thing about this. You don't have to learn how to use it. As a matter of fact, it may, you may be, may be spoiled a little bit. Uh, ACC Stop and Go is an uh, upgrade of the adaptive cruise control, which is, you know, uh, for Stop and Go traffic or city drivers in conjunction with other sensors. It breaks the vehicle to a standstill while the distance the vehicle ahead is always considered. If the driver ahead accelerates, the car drives away automatically and falls. So basically what they're wanting you to do, I mean what it's trying to do, is making sure that there is kind of avoids accidents. Why do most accidents happen in traffic? People not paying attention. What else? Texting. Huh? Well, I mean, the, 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 what's, the, what's the most common reason that, that an accident happens in a traffic situation when you're in traffic? 
Actually, you might want to hit the brakes quick enough. Well, they were going too fast. Plant roads. What what I always like to what I always told my boys when I was teaching them how to drive is it usually happens because somebody does something the other drivers don't expect. Pulling out in front of somebody, turning in front of somebody, hitting the brakes too quick, you know. I mean, and basically when you're driving too fast, you sort of lose it and can't stop, you know. That's why it's a bad idea to drive fast in a parking lot. You don't know what kind of little kid's going to step out in front of your car. You need to be able to stop. It's best to be going really, really, really slow when there's people walking around that kind of stuff. And just about everybody that's ever driven a car knows that you don't go buzzing through the Walmart parking lot at 60 miles an hour, you know, because you're going over somebody if you do, right? Uh, lower cost FTD systems made the technology available for other vehicle classes. You know, that's a little bit of verbiage there. Rachel helped me with this PowerPoint presentation. As hydraulics fade, electronics is sparking a revolution and break the performance, and so they say, you know, whatever. You know, but uh, there's been a little bit of an issue with this, but I want to look at a few of the advantages they designed in this sense of product. So you got side-to-side -side differential braking. With a system sense of brake application in a high-speed turn, it applies more brake fluid pressure to the outside wheels because centrifugal force puts a greater load on the outside wheels while turning. The outside tires presumably have more traction in these situations. That kind of keeps you more in control. All right. Uh, then this is what I was talking about before. You basically use this squeegee contact to keep the pads and rotors dry. I mentioned that briefly in another slide right here. And more brake application in the rain. That's good stuff right there. All right, so basically, anticipation of panic situations if the throttle position sensor notes a sudden release of the accelerator pedal, followed by sensitronic noticing fast brake pedal application, the system raises available hydraulic pressure to speed up any of the, see, you may stomp on the brake and it's going to raise the pressure automatically so you can stop that much quicker. But there's also factoring in your ABS. This stuff is happening in nanoseconds. I mean, like, it's real quick, you know. That's pretty good. We're looking for that safe at any speed deal, I guess, whatever. Okay, so we lose the juice. So you don't have brake fluid, if you drop the brake fluid, in caliper, wheel cylinder, ABS hydraulic brake control unit. And what happens if a brake or fluid line, you know, half the brakes won't work in a rear-wheel drive vehicle? See, if you're going totally electronic with your brakes, I guess they feel like you're going to do that. Well, we got resistance to the electronic uh, technology, excuse me. Uh, they didn't spread as rapidly as they thought it would because of recalls of a few sensitronic equipped cars. You know which ones gave trouble? Taxi cabs. That's the ones they had the most trouble with. A taxi cab is, you know, gets beat up on here. It was voluntary. They didn't, the government didn't make them do it. It reportedly followed system failures on high mileage Mercedes taxi cabs in Europe. In the U.S., about 140,000 cars were called in. In most cases, the only thing done was to reprogram the system software. So, some upper level Mercedes models have got so much electronic sophistication on them, though, they're not intuitive for most drivers to use. I read about this guy one time, and <laughs> he was having some kind of a party at his house, and this one guy that he knew uh, got, had too much to drink. And he didn't want the guy driving out of there. The guy says, well, you know, the guy was half drunk, but he says, get my BMW off the street anyway. You know, and he says, well, you sleep on the couch, I'll go get your BMW off the street. So he went in and got in the guy's BMW, and when he got in there, he pulled it into the driveway, it was at night, you know, and it locked the doors, and he couldn't get the doors open, and he couldn't figure out how to turn on the lights to see how to open the doors, and he's, this is going to sound stupid, but at the end of his little article he wrote, he said he was just sitting in there figuring he was going to have to spend the night in the car because he couldn't figure out how to lock the doors, he couldn't figure out how to roll the windows down, he couldn't figure out how to turn on the inside lights because he didn't know where everything was. Well, see, now you got... In some models, most motorists would not be able to store radio station presets without reading the manual or maybe attending that school because of the stuff like that. Now, one of the things I noticed about you younger guys, when I was training younger guys when I was at the Ford place, and there was a radio or a fancy car that came in there that needed some set setting, no, no, it was set the clock or whatever, I would tell the teenager, whoever, 16, 17-year-old boy that I was, you know, basically shadowing me or whatever, I'd say, sit down in this car and set the clock on the radio. And within 30 seconds, they could figure out how to do it and get it set. You know, but the older ones of us typically have a little bit of trouble with that kind of thing. Uh, the funny thing is, unlike audio and HVAC controls, you didn't have to teach anybody how to use sensitronic. It's transparent as operation. Automatically does everything it does. You don't have to do anything special. 
That's what the cool thing about it. And the only reported failures were confined to flogged out taxis. You got me? All right. So as consumers have seen other electronic systems become a bother, they just as soon not see electronic dominate a system as vital as their brakes. The cool little thing there. Now, one of these things is not like the others. What do you see? A picture of a guy. <laughs> Anybody know who that guy is? Extra points if you know who the guy is. Is he something to do with a mob or a gangster? Huh? Anybody know who that guy is? Tell me somebody, tell me who that guy is. The guy on the picture. Very intelligent, Justin. Huh? The guy, the guy, the man in black. <laughs> When you see this face from now on, and I can tell you, you guys probably went to modern day schools, uh, but when I was in school, everybody that I went to school with could tell you who that guy was. Just look at his picture. You ever heard of Winston Churchill? That's Winston Churchill. No, basically. But anyway, that was the last slide. I was just going to have make a little have a little fun with that. So, uh, all right, here we go. Somebody tell me you something you learned. Now I know. Uh, He'll probably say the, the last thing that he'll find, I found out that was Winston Churchill. <laughs> what do you think? What did you learn that you didn't know before? That some vehicles, like when you turn on the windshield wipers, it basically squeegees the water off the discs, I mean on this sensitronic stuff. What did you, what did you learn? Do you know something? If you didn't, you weren't paying attention. And you'll have to watch it all over again. Yeah, block what he said. Yeah, what? When you cut the windshield wipers on, it tells the computer that uh, the road is wet and it bumps the pads up against the rotors. Yeah. That way, it uh, keeps them yeah. dry. <laughs> That's what he was just talking about. I what about you? Know. I thought he said the windshield. Yeah. Was it? Uh, I thought you was talking about it automatically. They landed the, on the moon with a stick. They landed on the stick landing on the, the eagle. The eagle landed. That's how they came up with the, all the computers in the car. Yeah, they only had one computer. Yeah. I always try to figure out like, if you guys pick something up or not. You know what I mean? I don't know Mercedes mass produced taxes. Yeah. They do for the ones in Europe. When I was at, when I went to see my son graduate from Navy, Navy boot camp in 2004 in Chicago, I didn't see a single taxi in 2004 that was not a Crown Victoria. Thousands and thousands of taxi cabs I saw when I was in Chicago. And there was not a single one of them I saw that 